On the occasion of the death of the English Queen Elizabeth II, and because this is a military history channel specializing in World War II, we want to do this short program to comment on the role of the young princess during this conflict. It all started in 1939 with the beginning of this conflict, in which Great Britain entered on September 3rd after declaring war on Germany. On that date, Princess Elizabeth was 14 years old, and she considered evacuating them out of the country, specifically to Canada. Despite the fact that at that time the bombing campaign on English or German soil had not yet begun, which would later cause the evacuation of a large population from the big cities, in those days everything was uncertain. In any case, the English King George VI and his wife declared that they would never leave the country, and that his children would not either. From this point on, the royal family lived in various palaces, until finally, in the mid-1940s, they settled in Windsor Palace, located about 30 kilometers west of London. When in June 1940 France surrendered to Germany, and the Wehrmacht invasion of Great Britain seemed imminent, there was pressure to evacuate the royal family to North America, but their will to continue in their country was firm. A little later, Princess Elizabeth made one of her first radio broadcasts, in which she addressed other children who had been evacuated from the big cities of England, because let us remember that by this time a tough aerial combat was taking place in the English skies. In this message Isabel declared the following, in an attempt to encourage the population. We're trying to do everything we can to help our brave sailors, soldiers, and airmen, and we're also trying to bear our share of the danger and sadness of war. We know, each one of us, that all will be well in the end. In 1943 when the princess was 17 years old, she began to make a series of visits to different British army barracks, while she asked her parents' permission to enlist as a volunteer. Despite the fact that the war was becoming more and more favorable for the Allied side, and Great Britain was in less danger, this request was rejected. Due to the circumstances of the moment, when Isabel was approaching her 18th birthday, the English Parliament modified the law so that she could act as one of the five councillors of state, in case of incapacity or absence of her father abroad. This modification had a lot of foundation because her father had to make several visits during that year of 1944, as was her visit to Italy in July of that same year. Although at that time the war was practically won, some kind of misfortune could always occur in any event of this type. It was in February 1945, just three months after the end of World War II, and about to turn 19, that Isabel was allowed to enlist in the Auxiliary Territorial Service. This body was basically the female section of the British Army. Their main function was driving and transportation tasks, postal and telegraphic services and even as ammunition inspectors. By the end of 1941 some 65,000 women formed this branch of the British Army and its functions were expanding. There was always an intention to keep women away from combat so that at no time would they see each other in the middle of a battle. In this photograph from April 1945, we can see Princess Elizabeth in the uniform of the Auxiliary Territorial Service, next to a military ambulance. Let us remember that during the summer of 1944 the famous V-1S began to fall on English soil, the last German rocket falling on March 29, 1945. Although these weapons were not as effective as the propaganda would have you believe, this unit had to make numerous sorties to attend to, to the wounded that these attacks caused. Finally, when on May 8, 1945, the Second World War ended, the streets of London were filled with tens of thousands of people who came out to celebrate. Later, the future Queen Elizabeth acknowledged that on the day they asked her parents for permission to go out into the street incognito and mingle with the crowd. According to Isabel confessed in said interview, she was afraid that someone would recognize her on the street but her desire to be in her celebration was greater. In any case, everything went without incident for her and for her sister Margaret who also accompanied her. As you can imagine, it is almost certain that they would have royal security guards throughout the tour that the princesses took. Eight years after the end of World War II, Elizabeth was crowned queen after the death of her father Jorge and she has held the position for 70 years until just a few hours ago. As a final curiosity, when Elizabeth II was crowned, Winston Churchill was the English Prime Minister, in his second term. In addition, she has also been the last Queen of the Great British Empire, 
which was diluted in most of her during the years of her reign. And so far this program which I hope you have found interesting, about this historical character who has been so present in almost all the events of the last 75 years. We say goodbye here. Many thanks to everyone, especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and see you in the next one. See you soon.